Good morning! Welcome or welcome back to the Procrastinator podcast. Sorry, I'm trying to try to balance the light. Okay, welcome or welcome back to the Procrastinator podcast, knitting podcast. My name is Jane and today we are downstairs um, at my parents' house. This is our garden. It's very lovely flowers all year round. I'm in Southern California. If you don't know, today is a cloudy day. And today, I think, is June 5th. Um, but yeah, so new new podcast episode out today, technically. So if you haven't seen that episode, you should watch it before this one. Um, but today, as you might be able to tell, I have two finished objects um, and two new cast-ons to share with you so it's um new finally because i feel like i've been talking about the same things over and over <laughs> and i'm uh, happy to be sharing some new stuff with you i'm drinking tea out of a mug i made um yeah this is harney and sons paris blend it's really good it's one of my favorites okay let's get started so as you can see i have finished the anchors sweater by petite knit this is a yoke sweater circular yoke sweater i knit the size three and it's been washed and blocked the ends have been woven in but not cut um and this is what it looks like so Um, I like it. The fit is good. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the fit. Uh, the sleeves are a bit long. They did grow quite a bit. I don't have my watch on right now, but this is really my preferred length. So, um, even though I did a tubular cast off, I think I will actually go back and take out, I feel like at least an inch, um, yeah, at least an inch of this, which, you know, shouldn't be too hard, but it is a little bit annoying, but that is why we haven't cut things off. So, yeah, so I'll go do that, and then I will probably wash and block it once more. But this dried pretty quickly. Uh, it hasn't been hot, it's been cool, and this uh, dried in two days, so... Take that what you will. The yarn is Malabrigo Arroyo. I think I've been saying Malabrigo Rios for a while, and I don't know why I got that into my head, but that is just untrue. So this is Malabrigo Arroyo. And um, yeah, it's really lovely. It's really soft against skin, really nice to wear, and really, really warm. It is 100% wool. I think it's super wash, but it is really warm. Um, and I'm, I'm really liking how everything is looking now that it is all blocked out. Yeah, it's just really comfortable to wear. And honestly, if I wasn't work on, working on so many other projects, this is a really quick knit. So it's definitely something I would knit again. And it's something my mom has shown some interest in. So, yeah. This um, is really lightweight. I don't know what the pattern calls for in terms of yardage and I haven't weighed it to see how much yarn is in here but I do want to show you how much yarn is left. So I started with four skeins, 400 grams of the Malabrigo Arroyo and this is how much I have left. I did rewind it just so it's a little bit neater. Um, there is quite a bit of air in this but still I would say it's got to be right around the 300 gram mark uh, as in what's all used i think definitely it's 300 grams or or less um in this sweater so that is really great and i am traveling this summer to europe so i think that this um is probably going to be a nice uh 
nice thing to wear on the plane or at night or something because it's so lightweight but it is warm for those for those chillier environments so yeah um definitely would recommend pattern it's really simple um it's very basic so if you have any pattern that is like i guess the special thing is kind of like this yoke so yeah i guess get the pattern for that but i was gonna say it's not very it's a very basic circular yoke sweater so oh something else i was gonna say when before this was blocked i did feel kind of sensitive right here by my collarbone with the wool but now I don't feel that anymore. I do think that next time I do a circular yoke, and everyone says this, but next time I do a circular yoke, I do think I might wanna add in some short row shaping so that um, uh, it just sits a little differently, but honestly, it's fine. So I might try it to see if it's worth doing, but uh, this is honestly fine. I, I, it's, I've seen some yoke sweaters that are closer to this, and I, I, I would think that this uh, would be uncomfortable, but at least the way that my cast on edge, or maybe it's this pattern, I don't feel uncomfortable with the yoke at all, so yeah. And again, everything is linked down below if you're um, curious about the pattern name. If, you know, I said it earlier and you forgot, you can look down in the description. I also have my Ravelry project page down below so that you um, can look at the project page and, and see, uh, yeah, see what's up, what size I knit, what needles and everything like that. So, yeah. That's the first finished object. My second finished object. This is my second finished object. This is the uh, ribbed to your measure top. Um, and this is my second time knitting this pattern. Uh, this time I knit the size small instead of the size medium which i did last time and i am really happy with the fit honestly there is still obviously there is negative ease but um i wonder if i could go i don't really want to go a needle size down so i honestly wonder if i could go one size lower than this because yeah i think i could definitely use more um Elastic. Yeah, this is the length. I really like the length. I uh, did not knit until the ball ran out, so this is less than 100 grams of yarn. I actually, now I'm actually wondering, this is Malabrigo sock, which is 100% superwash wool. And I wonder if I were to knit it with a sock yarn that has nylon, if um, if the size small would be uh, good enough. Because I fear with the extra small, I mean, I feel like there is still some uh, some room in the underarm. Like if it were to ride up a bit more, I would still be okay with that. So maybe. So maybe I do knit an extra small next time just to see. Um, I definitely don't usually wear extra small. I'm usually a medium in tops. So yeah, like, and sometimes I can get away with small, but I'm, I definitely haven't been an extra small top in a while. So um, I don't really know. But I guess what I'm trying to say is if the yarn I knit this width has nylon. I wonder if it would have more snap or spring to it um, versus the wool. So yeah, maybe that's something I will consider next time. I'm happy with this fit as well and especially for something that is, now that I know it's less than 100 grams, um, that is pretty wild. So yeah, really, really happy with this top. It's kind of hard to tell 
in this lighting, but it's ribbed. It's, it looks really sleek, really classic. Um, I feel that the finishing is uh, really nice and not too, like, not too much. It still feels casual. It doesn't feel too um, professional or elevated or tedious. <laughs> so I really, really like it. And um, yeah, I would definitely recommend, definitely recommend the pattern. Okay, so these two are my two finished objects and it feels literally so good to have these off the needles. I guess this one's not completely done because I'm gonna rip back and redo the sleeves, but still it, it yeah, so I guess this one's not done. <laughs> it's almost done. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the fabric is really nice, really lovely. So I do love that. And this is really nice as well. So, yeah. What else? So those are my whips, or my finished objects. And now we will talk about whips. So the first whip we'll share. I'm like, do I even share this thing at this point? Because I'm so over it. <laughs> are these socks. So last time I was like, will I bring them to school? Will I not? This was where I was last time, and so yes, obviously I did bring it to school, and um, I was able to start the heel flap. Hooray! Yeah, I, these socks are causing me so much. I don't know, I just don't really like them. Oh, I really don't like them. It's like, I don't know, like maybe it's because I... I know I overpaid for them. I don't know. I don't know, but I am not a fan. Let's just say I am not a fan. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I will move the stitch marker to be up here, but these are just vanilla socks, my second in the pair. They're okay, they're just not great. Project page linked below. And by there, I mean the yarn. I'm not, I don't love the yarn. It feels fun, I don't, I'm just not happy with how it's looking. And it's also making me um, come to terms with the fact that I don't like speckle. I really don't, like this is good, so I'm very, like, is this even variegated? I don't really know what to call this. And yeah, I don't know if the striping is because I alternated skeins, I did helical knitting, um, or if the yarn would have been like that anyway, because, yeah, I don't really know. But anyways, I'm fine with something like this, but the all over speckling, I don't really even know how to describe this. It is striping, like micro striping. If you can see, like there's like stripe, 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 stripe. But it's not tickling me. I don't like it. So that is a bummer. And yeah, maybe I won't even show these until they're finished or maybe I'll just like try to speed through them and finish because like I don't sub anymore like I'm uh, the last day of school has happened so there's no more subbing I'll be teaching summer school if you caught that update on the last episode um and I don't know if my hands will be quite as free to do the things that I want to do like knitting while I am teaching and not just subbing so But onwards. So I think that's the only whip you know of. I made some progress with Tokyo Shawl, but I'm not gonna show it. It looks pretty much the same. I'm not sure I'll show it again until something significant happens. Like if I have a significant revelation, I think I might just show it at the very end or when I'm close to it, I don't really know. But, so I think that's all you knew of whips. My next whip, is this <laughs> you might be wondering what is this this is my attempt at 
fulling or felting. I don't know. I think it's fulling. I think that's the technical term, but we can call it felting if we want. What I did is I basically knit a swatch. I want to make felted coasters, but my washing machine is a huge washing machine and it can hold a lot of clothing. So I didn't want to kind of waste water and just throw this in there with a couple of towels or a pair of jeans or whatever else the popular recommendation is or whatever the regular recommendation is. So yeah, basically knit up a swatch. I thought it was not long enough. So then I picked up stitches and did this, which is a mistake because as you can see, there are way more stitches here than needs to be. So it's kind of like, stretching the fabric in a weird way. I was just hoping to get enough fabric for two coasters, which I do think I have. It's not felted completely, so I'm not really sure what I want to do. Um, I think I might just throw it in the washing machine again and dryer again. First, what I did is I knit the swatch, then I tried hand felting or hand fulling by just bringing it with me to the shower, I guess, and like um, under the hot water, like scrubbing it um, as I like waited for my conditioner to set in. So like not for long, to be honest, um, probably d like around five minutes, um, definitely under 10 minutes of me actually scrubbing it. And I also like had it at my feet uh, when I was like, I don't know, washing my hair and stuff and try to like stomp on it and stuff. I don't really know, but, but I basically tried to like hand felt it, I guess. And it worked like a little bit. Um, hi, hi, Jenna. No <gasps> Whoa. So I did that and then it was, the fabric was definitely stiff, but you could definitely see a lot of stitch definition. So I was like, okay, like, you know what? I'll just throw it in the laundry machine. Um, I didn't put it on hot. I mean, it was, it, the temperature setting of my machine is like cold to hot, obviously, but there's, it's a five step temperature range and it automatically is, this is hot, this is cold. It's automatically on this and I didn't change it because I didn't, I was just kind of washing all my clothes like I didn't I don't know so I didn't want to put it on hot hot because I didn't want any dyes to potentially leak onto my white t-shirts that were in there <laughs> um, but there was definitely enough friction and then I put it in the dryer as well with all my clothes so this is what it looks like after hand felting and going through the washer and dryer I mean you and I did garter stitch because it's flat I wanted to stay flat I didn't know if it would roll if I did stockinette but I'm like maybe I should have done stockinette I don't really know if the garter the garter definitely makes it a thicker fabric so I don't know I'll put pictures of what it looks like before I did anything and then um, pictures of what it looks like after the hand felting or hand fulling. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That there's definitely still stitch definition. In some areas, it looks like fuzzier than others. And this is some scrap yarn, by the way. This is We Are Knitters, the Petite Wool. I made a sweater from this color palette that was gifted to me from William, my boyfriend. And these are just leftover bits. So. In terms of yarn construction, I thought this should be good for felting because it's a non-superwash wool, I believe, and it's single ply. So, you know, I thought theoretically that should help it felt, but I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think like having a coaster out of this is like fine. It just looks a little messy, so I guess I do want it to like start I yeah I guess I do want it to lose definition so I'll probably throw it in the wash and dry a couple more times in hopes that that would do something I might also try to hand felt it again 
uh, out of the shower, just in in a bucket or something. So we'll see. But that's that. A fun little experiment, if you will. My next cast on, or my next project, lives in here. And there are a pair of socks. So I just have the first one to show. Um, here it is. Okay, so I'm doing a lot of things with this sock that I've never done before. So first I wanted to try three by one rib. I do like it, but maybe for a garment or something, I don't know. I don't think this is a great sock cuff. I really do like the look of a cuff when it's a little cinched in. This is a little cinched in, but not a lot. Then I thought I wanted to do these thick six, six row stripes. And then I did it and I was like, that's gonna look so chunky and weird. I don't know. So I was like, I decided to make them progressively skinnier. So that's where I'm at. Um, I'm going to make them skinnier and bigger and skinnier. You know, it's going to it's gonna crescendo and descendo and what not. So yeah, these are the socks. I'm using two yarns. The green is Malabrigo sock. And the um, yellow is the At Haynes house that William's mom got for me at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. So yeah, I think these colors do go really well together. And like the brown, uh, all this together would have been like a really pretty sunflower or like dandelion situation. But I started these before I finished this. So yeah, so that's that. That's my progress on these striped socks. They're pretty fun, right? I don't know. Uh, I'm curious to see what they're going to look like once I start going big and, and then going small. Um, yeah, not much else to say. I'm enjoying them. And then my last new whip comes in this bag. Uh, this bag was a gift from William's mom as well that she caught in Canada. It's made by a uh local indigenous um like craftsman or group or something like that and this is a raven i think or some sort of bird don't know if you'll see it it's, it's a little hard to figure out um yeah i don't even know if i can tell you what is what but supposedly it's a raven and yeah, like I think this is the beak maybe, or maybe this is the beak, I'm not quite sure. But this is the yarn, this is the palette. And this. So you might recognize that this is um, the Escher Socks kit from Knit Stars. And this is my progress! So yeah, these are looking super awesome. Not much else to say about them. Um, let me put on a little stitch marker. I wanna like pick out something fun. Is this fun? So this I made myself just out of some beads from like Joann's or Michael's or something. And yeah, this is my second all over color work, but my first I wouldn't really even call color work, really. Um, it was another summer leaf pattern and it was like, uh, it was those like blocks, those grids. I am knitting with both hands for this, so that means I am holding I'm really only holding one strand in my left hand, which is what I usually do. 
uh, but I am knitting with this hand as well. So, um, so yeah, like I'll go like this. And then once I need to knit with this, I will knit it uh, by throwing, but I haven't like figured out how to actually hold that other yarn in my hand other than this. <laughs> so I don't know. I like keep fussing with it, but I haven't figured out a good and comfortable way to do that. So I haven't been, I guess. Um, but yeah. I am always holding the darker blue on my left hand and the lighter blue in my right hand. I actually learned from the Knit Stars, I guess kind of like their master classes, Yarniverse subscription that William's mom has. One of the videos was about like color work and color dominance. And somebody was saying that color dominance is about what yarn is on top and what is on bottom, meaning, uh, like, as you can see, the light blue is on top of the dark blue. I don't know if that really makes sense, but she was like, basically the way you hold your yarn, if you hold your yarn one strand in each hand, the one on your right hand will always go over top of the yarn on the bottom or on the left hand. So yeah, because when you wrap it, it'll go on top of this one. I don't really know, but she was like, for color dominance, that's actually it. Um, so yeah, I did want to make the lighter one, the one that popped out more. There's not really, I can't really give you an example of what it looked like if the blue popped out more, but um, I'm, I think, unless I have that flipped, I don't really, I could have had it flipped, but I think I was trying to make the blue, the lighter blue pop. So, we'll see. We'll see, but yeah, these are the socks. This is what it looks like on the inside. I'm loving it. I love the the colors as well. And um, yeah, this definitely takes some concentration to follow the chart. I think I could memorize it or read it based on, like I've completed one repeat, so I think I could like figure it out, but it's just easier when it's written out in a charted format. So yeah. Escher Socks by Summer Lee. And that is the last whip. That's it. Um, yeah. I, let's see. What is next? Oh, I did want to show you. So I, another project, another whip, I guess, is this yarn. You might recognize it because I knit a vest number one with it. Uh, but I've unraveled it. I was cleaning out my closet. It was taking a lot of space in my closet. I never wear it because, yeah, I made it at a time where I didn't understand gauge. I didn't understand yarn composition. I didn't really understand anything. I was just learning how to read a pattern, essentially. And I chose to knit the size large, even though the pattern had positive ease, ease written into it. I just didn't understand that. So it was way too big for me and just like not a good look, not a good fit. So I decided finally that I was ready to uh, unravel it and reclaim the yarn. So I have lots of these, um, enough to make the same thing again if I wanted to, but I, I have made another sweater vest number one and um, I, I'm a size small. I could have done it with a size small. So, you know, I might try to vest it again or not. I don't really, I'm not too sure. I think maybe like a V, V-neck vest or something with it, but it's a cotton and acrylic blend, if that helps, if you have suggestions. I don't know how much I have. I definitely have enough for a vest. Um, and a sweater, possibly, if it was a little cropped and the sleeves were uh, a bit more fitted. 
yeah, so that was that. And the final project I guess I want to talk about is what I'm hoping my next project will be. At the moment, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed still by the amount of things on the needles just because I think I have those two new socks, the ugly vanilla socks, and then this felting project. I do think it's a lot and I'm about to start teaching summer school. And then after summer school, I'm gonna go to Europe for a month and then I'm gonna go to school school. So given all that, it's really busy and I don't know if it's the best time to start another garment. I would knit a cardigan with this. But at the same time, I do think I would enjoy knitting this so much that it might be fun. But I don't know if it'd be overwhelming with two socks that are not vanilla socks and a vanilla sock that I don't enjoy working on. Um, if I should really cast on another project or if I should prioritize finishing my Tokyo straw, uh, shawl or what I do think I'll prioritize the, sh the shawl but this is the next on the needles for sure um, is gonna be this so I don't think I'll skein it up quite yet I really did think I was going to but now that I'm just like looking at everything I think I just gotta wait I just gotta wait the, the cookie is not crumbling the way that I want it to crumble, and that's okay. Um, okay, so thank you so much for watching. That's all I had to share Yarny related. I will share briefly what I've been watching, and yeah, just that, what I've been watching, if you're curious. But other than that, thanks for joining, and I appreciate you. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to catch my next episode. And feel free to let me know what you've been working on, um, what things you're looking forward to this summer, or anything of the sort. And if you have tips on this. Um, but yeah, what else? Uh, what have I been watching? I've been watching Rebels. So we're done with Clone Wars, so I'm watching Rebels. And that's another Star Wars animated TV show. It is good. I don't love the animation style as much as I love um, Clone Wars, but it's pretty good. Actually, something I do want to mention is, oh, and we watched Tales of the Jedi and that was good too. But, um, sorry, something I do want to mention is I play Clash of Clans. If anyone out here plays Clash of Clans, Join my clan. It would be so fun. Um, but that's what I've been doing too, is playing Clash of Clans. I just upgraded my town hall for the first time in like months. So I think I just made the jump from like eight to nine or nine to 10. I don't know. I have the white town hall with like red now. And I used to have, I think I used to be the dark gray town hall. I'm not sure. But anyways, my town hall has been upgraded and all is well. So yeah, that's what I've been doing as well with my time. Um, currently I'm watching a comedy special call with um, Shang Wang, I believe. That's pretty funny, I like it. Um, I watched yesterday, I watched Love and Death love and death the tv show and it was pretty good and then i found out that it's based on a true story and i found out that another tv show was also based on that story and was made last year called candy so then i tried to watch that too and it was not as good <laughs> so love and death i did like it i watched it with my ceramics boss <laughs> um the ceramics artist i'm a studio assistant so I did watch it with her and I don't think I would have picked it up on my own but it was pretty good and yeah I don't know you guys I'm feeling so like tired at the moment like I need to lay down so I'm actually gonna cut it short there's a couple of more things I'm watching and things like that but another time it's not that important um thank you again for joining me make sure you like the video if you liked it and all that jazz 
and my Ravelry page is down below and let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.